the surface. It's a, this is a pyramid, right? So this is a, what's the flux through the the uh, let's see here. And I could even ask, I could even ask, what's the flux through one face? What's the flux through one face of the pyramid? And then let's say it's a pyramid such that the, all the faces are equivalent area, right? So how would we answer that question? If we use the Gauss's law, we can also make a good argument of how to answer it. We could say there's no charge enclosed in it, so everything coming in should go out, right? So the, the total flux is going to be zero. And then the, the flux from the left side plus the flux from all of this right side is equal to zero. So break up the total into the two parts. The left side is easy, easy to do because it's an easy area, just, uh, just a flat face. So the left side is going to be, let's say the electric field is uh, um, 6 newtons per coulomb. So the left side is going to be negative 6, right? And therefore, the right side is going to be, so the combi combination of that needs to be 0. Therefore, the right side needs to be positive 6. So if the problem asks me, what's the flux through each particular face, the integral of this would have been hard to do, right? That would, be the, that would have been a hard integral to do. The E is this way. The area is slanted down. I would have to do a tough integral. But the easy way of doing it is just to use symmetry and to say, well, if they're equivalent faces, how many faces do you have, right? One, two, three, and then the back there, four. So divide six by four. So without having to do an integral, I know the flux through one face. See? Now, if I do an integral, I should still get the same answer. But it's just, why would you do it if there's a shorter way of doing it? So you see, this is one outcome of the Gauss's law. It enables us to do things like this. The other use of it is I'm going to illustrate it next week. The other purpose of it is it allows us to find the electric field of certain symmetrical charge distributions. Okay? In certain limited cases, we can use Gauss's law to find the electric field of some charge distributions, uh, such as long rods or lines, you can say. So we can find the electric field of a long line or rod. And we could even go inside of the rod if the rod is, has a certain thickness. And we can say, what's the electric field inside of the rod? So I'll show you how to do that again next week. And we can find the electric field of a sphere either outside of the sphere or inside of the sphere at any point. So we can go inside of a sphere and ask, what's the electric field inside of the sphere at any point or outside of the sphere using Gauss's law? And the other kind of distribution is, uh, oh, cylinder, which is basically the same as a line or rod. It's just thicker, OK? And then the other one is a, a, a sheet. A plate. It's uh, drawn like this. So sheet or plate. It, it, it needs to be relatively large. It needs to be charged. So if I want to find the electric field near that sheet, I can use Gauss's law. So that's it, basically. The electric field of a cylinder, sphere, or sheet. And then I'll show you how to do that next week. OK? Good. So